A 19-year-old suspect, Nicholas Cruz, seen in the video in Maroon in custody, and they're now working to determine a possible motive tonight. Authorities are saying that Cruz is a former student of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School and was previously expelled for disciplinary reasons. Florida Senator Bill Nelson, he's offering up new details of the attack, saying that the suspect wore a gas mask, had smoke grenades, and set off the fire alarms so that students would come out into the hallways. A teacher from the school telling the Miami Herald tonight that the suspect has been identified as a possible threat to students in the past. Our own Phil Keating, he is on the scene tonight in Parkland, Florida, with the latest details on this investigation. Phil. This will be the, the last briefing of the evening. I'm here with Governor Scott. I'm here with uh, Rob Lasky, director of the SAC of the FBI down the Miami Field Division, Mayor Bean Fur, County Commissioners, and Mr. Runcy. I want to start out by saying uh, to Broward County, to the state of Florida, and to this nation, uh, another horrific day, a detestable day. I'm absolutely sick to my stomach to see children who go to school armed with backpacks and pencils lose their lives. Uh, this nation, we need to see something and say something. If we see different behavior, aberrant behavior, we need to report it to local authorities. Um, since we've last brief briefed, uh, we've identified 12 victims within this school. We will not be releasing the names of any victims until every family and every parent is notified accordingly. As soon as that's been done, of course, we will release a, a list. Um, I want to thank you for allowing, for getting the information to the folks we need. Uh, I'm going to bring up Mr. Runcy. Mr. Runcy is going to speak a little bit about some of the issues that the school board is incurring as superintendent, some of the decisions he's made. Uh, and then you'll hear from Governor Scott. We'll take any questions and then we'll probably give you your next briefing tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Runcy. Um, this evening, um, our district is in a tremendous um, state of grief. Um, sorrow. Uh, we're, we're heartbroken uh, over this unspeakable tragedy that has occurred here in Parkland, Florida. Uh, words cannot express um, the sorrow that we feel. Um, the victims, the victims and their their families, our, our thoughts and prayers um, go out to them. Uh, no parent should ever have to send their kids to school and have them not return. That should not happen in Parkland. It shouldn't happen anywhere in this country. And this, we've got to find a way for this to stop. Um, as a district, we will continue to work with law enforcement. Uh, we are focusing on providing all of the support that our students, our families, and employees need to cope with this devastating tragedy. It's going to take us some time to go through this to heal, to figure out how to move on. Some updates on Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. Um, as for activities in school, will be closed for the remainder of this week. Um, all activities uh, will be canceled as well. We are going to provide grief counselors. They will be available to Marjorie Stoneman Douglas students and families at the Pines Trails Park Recreation Center and Amphitheater located at 10555 Trails End, Parkland, Florida, beginning at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Again, that's grief counselors for parents and families at Pines Trails Park Recreation Center in Parkland. We will also have grief counselors available for staff members at the Parkland Library at 6620 North University Drive in Parkland. Again, for the staff members, we will have grief counselors available at the Parkland Library at 6620 North University. Uh, the grief counselors will also be available at West Glades Middle School, which is right adjacent to uh, this high school as well. And what I can tell you about um, today's shooter, uh, today's shooter, was a former Marjorie Stoneman Douglas student and was currently enrolled in Broward County Public Schools. 
Because of federal laws around FERPA and student privacy, I can't provide you any additional information about the student at this time. Again, uh, we are tremendously um, heartbroken, saddened our prayers, our thoughts go out to the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas family and the victims. We're gonna pull through this together as a community. Uh, this has been a day we've seen the worst in humanity. Tomorrow is gonna bring out the best in humanity as we come together to move forward from this unspeakable tragedy. And I would like to thank Sheriff Israel uh, and all the law enforcement agencies. It's been unbelievable. Um, the courage, the support, almost every municipality in Broward County has been here. They've been coordinated. They've been working nonstop. Uh, the governor, his office, the state, everyone has just been um, outstanding in terms of their support and their efforts. And it's been heartwarming to see that. So as a community, as a state, I'm sure we'll be able to recover from this. Governor Scott, thank you. So as soon as soon as you hear something like this is happening, the first thing you, you start thinking about the families, you know, you think about your own family as a grandparent and a parent. The first thing you think about is, you know, you know, God, I hope this never happens to my family. Then you, always, you think about you're furious. How could this ever happen in this country? How could this happen in this state? Uh, this is a state that is focused on keeping all of our children safe. You come to the conclusion this is just absolutely pure evil. This state does not tolerate violence. We have law enforcement that will always show up to defend our safety. As soon as this happened, I started uh, having updates from Sheriff Israel. I've talked to President Trump, the Secretary of Homeland and Security, Kristen Nielsen, Superintendent Runsey the Commissioner of Law Enforcement, uh, for our Florida Department of Law Enforcement, Rick Swearingen. And I know everybody has worked tirelessly to make sure we do everything to keep everybody safe and to have a thorough investigation. My prayers are with everybody impacted. I can't imagine what the families that are, that, you know, are sitting there wondering if, they're, if they've lost a family member, they don't know yet. Those that do know they've lost a family member, I just, I mean, my, I just can't imagine how their lives have been changed. Like all of us, we'll be praying for each of those. Everybody in the hospital, I pray for their uh, full recovery. All the individuals that unfortunately had to go through this experience, I know that there's going to be grief counselors, and I'm sure it's going to be very, very difficult as they think through what happened and, and replay in their mind what happened. I, I just can't imagine going through that. Uh, after uh, this uh, press conference, I'm going to be going to the hospital to do everything I can with those families. I've, I'm going to continue to let local law enforcement, the school district, everybody involved know whatever state resources are necessary, we will provide whatever resources are needed to do everything we can, either whether it's the investigation or help any family member uh, that's impacted. Um, again, I just, I just, this is just, uh, this is just pure evil. But I will be staying here in Broward County to do everything I can to be helpful. Basically, minutes after this event happened, I got a call from our Attorney General, Pam Bondi. Hours later, she's here. Um, she sadly, when I was speaking to her privately, she knows all too well about these tragedies. She was in Orlando in the aftermath of the Pulse nightclub, and she's come down here to help the families uh, of those that lost loved ones. So I'm gonna bring her up here to talk to you about some of the things that uh, the Attorney General is going to do for our families. Thank you, Sheriff. Sheriff, I cannot thank you, the Governor, and the FBI. Rob, how you've handled this, you've been incredible. Superintendent, FDLE, all of the agencies working together. Um, it's a horrible tragedy and sadly we've been through this before. I was also out in Nevada for the mass shooting. In fact, one of the victims called me on the way here from the Nevada shooting and said, I can't believe this is happening again. She still has PTSD and she was a survivor. The office, um, my office functions in a way, and this is what we're gonna be doing. I have five advocates headed in right now. I will have at least 10 more tomorrow, driving in from all over the state. 
we will pay for the funeral expenses of these poor victims and do everything we can to help their families. The state of Florida, we will pay for counseling for the surviving victims. We will pay for students who need counseling. Um, we will have the forms, it's paperwork that just must have page that must be filled out. We bring it to the victims' families so they can get it done right now. Don't have to worry about the expenses. We will take care of it. Go fund me. Reached out to me already tonight. They've been pulling off anyone. If you think you're going to scam people during this tragedy, you're not. Go fund me. They're monitoring every every site that's popping up and no money will be dispersed to undergo fund me until they know it's legitimate so if you are donating to a crowdfunding site GoFundMe is making sure that those funds will go to true victims and their families. We've also reached out to the funeral homes, the directors in Florida, who have been great partners through Pulse. We will not let funeral homes gouge us. The funeral home industry, they're sending down people tomorrow to help um, with the cost of the burial expenses for these victims. Um, sadly, We've all um, become a, a club that we never wanted to be a part of, um, partnering with the FBI. And now this is our third time dealing with such a mass tragedy, but we will continue to work together as a team, as a family, and love and take care of all of these victims and their family members. That's why we're all here. Governor, thank you for everything you've done and always do for our state. Yeah, one thing the, the Attorney General's office does is they bring in victim advocates and they, she will, her and her team, they will go through and help each each family that uh, has impacted. So if you want, you know, the best way is to reach out to the Attorney General's office. And we'll you have find advocates. our victims, that's right. In conclusion, uh, in this beautiful town of Parkland where I've lived uh, up until a year ago, I've lived here with my family and raised our kids here for 10 years. Um, we lost a football coach from Stone Douglas High School tonight. My triplets graduated from this very school. We had, I won't be releasing the name, but we had a deputy sheriff whose son was shot tonight, shot in the arm. He's at one of the local area hospitals. I'm being told he's being treated with non-life-threatening injuries, thank God. Uh, if you are on a website and you know something or you've seen something, you see a person with rifles and weaponry and you see something that's not right, you owe it to your family, you owe it to your community, and you owe it to law enforcement to make this a safer nation by calling up someone tonight. Call up the FBI, call up the Broward Sheriff's Office, call up someone tonight and let them know that you have information or something's not right. You could prevent a major tragedy like this, like this devastation that happened in Parkland tonight. Any questions? Sheriff, Phil Governor, Keating, Fox News. Governor. Can you provide more insight yet on the 17 fatalities, ages, how many were students, how many teachers, um, whether all of the parents have been, in fact, notified at this point, if, in fact, they do have a deceased son or daughter, and also motive? No. I'll repeat what I said earlier. Twelve of the victims have been identified. Uh, their parents are in the process of being notified. We're looking to ID, uh, you know, uh, some of these children had no ID. They had no, they, they left their backpacks. There were no cell phones, so we could trace them back. So we're in the process of, uh, of, identi uh, of identifying uh, these children and, and adults so their families can be notified. So I can't elaborate any more than that. Governor, sure. have you identified Go. all students? Or is there anyone still missing? We have only identified 12 of, of the 17 that have lost their lives. Do you know of anyone missing? Student body located just not identified. every no everybody everybody's, everybody's accounted for but we, we're identifying the victims because we don't know the names of the victims the right. but you've accounted for all the students in some yeah. way yeah. Sure. yes you know, governor, 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 scott, governor, scott, you governor scott governor scott question for you today it's parkland with it's columbine and everything in between are we all in society politicians like you included complicit when critics say we pay lip service to the great need for mental health care in this country we were a nation of washing guns when people like you were very pro-gun, don't want to see gun restrictions. When do you take a stand? Are you willing to take one now that it's happened in the backyard of your own state on mental health, on Florida ranks poorly, and on gun control? What is your response? You know, you know, my heart goes out to everybody impacted today. Um, you know, all of us 
can internalize this if it would happen in their family. You know, all of us want to have, live in, and have everybody live in a safe community. And there's a time to continue to have these conversations about how through law enforcement, how through mental illness funding, that we make sure people are safe and we'll continue to do that. Governor, what business does a 19-year-old have in having an AR-15? Specifically, just your thoughts. Yeah. The, you know, we're finding all the facts. You know, we're, there's a thorough investigation going on. The sheriff's department will release exactly what happened, how the individual got a gun, things like things like that. We'll learn, learn those things, and then we can make it. You know, we can determine the future. You know, how we continue to make this place safe. What was your conversation with the president? You have armed guards in the schools to prevent this type of tragedy. You, you agree that you should have armed guards in the school system? Yes. Yeah, you want to answer it? If a person, I've said this over and over and over again, if a person is predisposed to commit such a horrific event, like go into a school and shoot people, if a person is going to drive a truck into a crowded area, if a person is committed to committing great carnage, there's not anybody or not a lot law enforcement could do about it or any entity could do about it. The only things we can do are train very hard. We have to train rigorously and we do. We have to be able to mitigate. We have to be able to respond quickly so we can lessen the loss of lives. Um, certainly more money should go to mental health. Uh, I've said this time and time again, uh, you know, if we tear a knee up, we go to an orthopedic surgeon. If we have mental health issues, we need to be treated. But while people who are the victim of mental health illnesses in this country are being treated, in, in the opinion of this sheriff, they should not be able to buy, surround themselves, purchase, or carry a handgun. Those two things don't mix. So thank you for coming out here. I think we've answered all the appropriate questions. And tomorrow we'll, uh, you know, we'll update you again. Um, and again, the most important thing is we need to pray tonight for these families. We need to pray for the victims. We need to pray for our communities. And we need to report anything we see that is different, that doesn't make sense, that's an aberration, that can help us prevent these mass tragedies. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Sean, that was Robert County Sheriff. Scott Israel, who has led the investigation all day. Hello, Attorney General Bonnie, right there. Uh, big contingent of elected leaders here tonight. Uh, Attorney General Pam Bonney, as well as Governor Rick Scott, flew in from Tallahassee. They have m met with all of the investigatory leaders behind me at the high school to get the latest on the scene. As we did just hear, Sean, of the 17 fatalities, only 12 have been absolutely confirmed as far as their identities, but all students and teachers have been accounted for. They are just now trying to further identify some of these victims who had left identification behind as they were running for their lives, trying to escape what happened here at about 2.30 this afternoon when, according to the sheriff, the accused suspect, whom he is convinced is the lone gunman, a 19-year-old, Nicholas Cruz, a former student of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, which is a quarter of a mile behind me, expelled last year. Further details about where that student uh, was in, enrolled this year, uh, they cannot expand on per the Broward County School Superintendent. But clearly, uh, according to the sheriff, he was armed to the gills with magazines full of bullets, an AR-15 assault rifle, and uh, went to the school today. According to Senator Bill Nelson of Florida, uh, who talked with law enforcement investigators, pulled the fire alarm in the afternoon, uh, getting all of the students and teachers to suddenly flood the hallways and flee the classrooms, and then proceeded to one by one start opening fire. We have 17 confirmed fatalities, 15 others were wounded and have been treated or are still being treated at Broward County, Florida hospitals as we speak. The suspected gunman, Cruz, 
did get treatment at uh, Broward County North. Uh, he has since been released. We don't know how the gunman may have been injured, what those injuries were, but the gunman is alive and appears to be fine and is now being processed in custody at the Broward County Jail. And in the next day or two, we'll face a long list of very serious charges here, 19 years old. Uh, that certainly entitles this uh, defendant upon conviction of guilt to be going to life in prison uh, for the rest of his life or perhaps to death row, uh, which Governor Rick Scott here has presided over the most executions in his two terms than any other sitting governor of the state of Florida. No more details regarding motive, uh, but according to social media investigations, as well as other reports from other students, this was a student who seemed to try to uh, enjoy being perceived as strange and weird, had a fascination with guns and bombs, and according to investigators, was wearing a gas mask, had gas grenades or smoke grenades on his person uh, when he pulled the fire alarms, triggering the exodus of people who at first thought they heard pops. Um, that is the latest. This is just getting started here as far as the investigation, Sean. All right, Phil, 17 families tonight having to deal with losing loved ones. Unbelievable. Uh, a lot of kudos. We just heard from the local sheriff, Scott Israel, the school superintendent, and, of course, the governor, the, attor the uh, attorney general of the state of Florida, Pam Bondi, Rick Scott, uh, add first responders, FBI, uh, law enforcement, police, sheriff, and and literally the superintendent everybody all hands on deck today uh and what is an unbelievable tragedy and shooting and obviously premeditated murder joining us now at the very latest what do we know about this gunman our own trace gallagher has the new information trace Sean, when you look at the death toll and the attack itself, it does appear the shooter had planned this out meticulously. Remember, 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz was enrolled at Stoneman Douglas High just a few months ago before he was expelled for disciplinary reasons. So at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, he knew that his former classmates would be up on the third floor of the school building, and he knew that by pulling the fire alarm, as many students say he did, that it would draw students into the hall and toward the gunfire. Last year, many of the suspect's classmates jokingly predicted that if there was a school shooting, he would be the attacker. One classmate recalls Cruz showing him pictures of guns on his cell phone, saying that he planned to use them because shooting weapons gave him, quote, an exhilarating feeling. One of the teachers at Stoneman Douglas told the Miami Herald that Cruz made threats against students last year and because of that was listed as a security threat. The teacher claims the faculty was warned that Cruz was not to be allowed on campus with a backpack. And now BuzzFeed is reporting that last year Nicholas Cruz complained to them that he was being bullied and that he was tired of it. Tonight, the Broward County Sheriff said the suspect's social media footprint was disturbing, and the social media accounts that we have pulled up certainly reflect that. On Instagram, Nicholas Cruz followed several gun groups, posted pictures of himself brandishing knives and guns, and even followed Middle Eastern groups like Syrian resistance fighters and Iraqi fighters. And he recently posted a picture online of a bullseye riddled with bullets and a caption that reads, Group therapy, you should try it. A short time ago, the Broward County Sheriff confirmed the 19-year-old suspect used an AR-15 semi-automatic rifle, countless magazines, intimating the attack could have lasted much longer. Sean. All right, Trace, you look at this. We keep going back. Every time these shootings occur, we've got, as you call it, the social media footprint. And, and one has to wonder why there's not a, a stronger presence. Why, you know, when you have one kid saying today, everyone predicted it about this student or the student wasn't allowed to bring uh, a backpack to school and the student was expelled. You know, I, I, I don't want to politicize this as others have already tonight, but one wonders, can we have retired military, retired policemen, you know, in our schools, a first line of defense? It doesn't mean it's going to work every time, but it's certainly, I think if everybody asks themselves a question, if they have trace an active shooter in an administrative building of any kind would they rather have military retired military retired police there i think we owe it to our students because i don't think you can take evil out of people's hearts 
And there's a big debate across the country, Sean, about whether or not you have armed police officers on campus. I mean, this school did have a police presence at all times, but the question remains, do you have armed police officers? And as far as the social media aspect of it, it goes on every campus across the country. There are intimidating, there are pictures that should be investigated, but there are also privacy laws that protect a lot of these kids. The problem becomes, as the sheriff said tonight, if you see something, you say something. Every one of these kids that spoke out today said, look, we knew last year. We jokingly said if there was a school shooting, this would be the guy who did it. But the question is, did they tell the teachers? The one teacher that said today to the Miami Herald that this kid was a threat, that he was deemed a security threat, and if he brought a backpack on campus, that teachers should notify the school administration. And that, that same question was asked to the school superintendent, and the superintendent says there was no security threat or any kind of of intimidation that we know no, of social so media, it seems like everybody's not on the same page if a kid gets thrown out of school and i'm not casting aspersions or blame on anybody you always blame the person responsible but if you're going to mm -hmm. throw a kid out of school for disciplinary reasons it might be a wise thing to at least maybe offer counseling first off and then second off uh maybe look at the social media aspect of what this person, what might be going through their mind. Uh, Trace, stay with us. We're going to get back to you in a second. We go back to uh, Parkland. Bill Kitty now has as a guest uh, Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi, who we just heard from in that press conference. Uh, Phil, I don't think the Attorney General can hear me. If she could go into this whole yeah. aspect of a social media imprint, what some of these shooters are, are saying online, are we capturing enough of this? Are we paying enough attention to that? All right, Sean, uh, the first thing he wants to ask you before we get to what you said with President Trump today uh, is social media and what some of these uh, killers and accused killers in these mass murders and shooting sprees are posting or hinting at or alluding to. They don't just pop up from anywhere. There are warning signs. And if you see warning signs with your child, if you know some of your kids' friends who you feel, you need to report it. You need to go to school counselors. You need to let people know that, that something isn't right. Last summer, you it's spent cool. so much time up in Orlando for the Pulse nightclub shooting. Um, how sickened were you today when suddenly you got the call, it's happened to you again at another school here in your state? It was heartbreaking. And in fact, when I was uh, immediately, I came down here. But on my way down, I also went to Las Vegas when they had the mass shooting at the concert out there. And one of the victims that I still keep in touch with, she has a bullet lodged in her spine. She contacted me on my way down and was still so traumatized, crying, saying that she's still praying for the victims here. So this is really the third time, and we've partnered with the great men and women of the FBI who are victims advocates with mine, and we're working just to get these families through this, to get them the counseling, the help they need, and to not be taken advantage of, believe it or not, um, by bad people during this time hey, of tragedy. Hey, Phil? And Sean, you have one more thing you I want to ask? One more her? question for the yes, Attorney sir. General. Uh, the, the Attorney General Bondi has been known for a really tough law and order Attorney General in the state of Florida. My question is, if we can't monitor evil that's in people's hearts, is it time, what about retired military, retired police in every school? At least have a, some front line of defense to give some capacity to, to stop carnage when it starts like this. As an aggressive law enforcer and the chief law enforcement officer in the state of Florida, uh, the fourth most populous state in the country. Third. Uh, third, actually, past New York. So is it feasible and is it plausible, and should we do it, start having armed guards at every single school, and if not armed guards, you have perhaps retired military, retired law enforcement to provide a beefier uh, scenario in and around schools as a form of deterrent. Yeah, well, as a career prosecutor, I firmly um, agree with that. Um, yes, that's why we have school resource officers. Do they need more help? Yes. Um, do I see, a, of course, um, if we have the funding for it, I think we do. I think we need that now. That's what we're seeing around this world. And we have to protect our kids um, from these monsters. You know, President Trump called me tonight and we talked at length. He is heartbroken. He is um, 
praying for all these families. All he wanted to ask me, how are the families, how are the families, how are the families? And that's where I'm headed now to do my job as Attorney General and with my advocates provide counseling, funeral expenses, um, and mental health counseling for, for all these traumatized victims as well. You know, President Trump is scheduled to be in Orlando on Friday afternoon, then make his way to Mar-a-Lago for the weekend uh, in light of this. Did he indicate whether he would also be making a, a visit down here? You know, all we talked about, all his only concern tonight, the victims, as it should be. All he asked about were, how are the victims? How are the victims? Are they okay? How are the families? He was so worried about the families and the victims. You know, he's a father, he's a grandfather, and he deeply, deeply cares about what's happening down here. And granted, we are very early into the prosecution of this case, yes. but clearly he's 19 years old. He's 19. Uh, he is eligible for the death penalty, eligible sure for full convictions on murder, uh, multiple counts, and life in prison. Uh, any personal feelings as to what you would like to see your state attorney pursue? Well, you're talking to a career prosecutor um, who seeks death penalty, who, who's prosecuted death penalty cases. Um, again, we we don't know the aggravators and the mitigators. We don't know the mental health now. But when you kill that amount of people, um, surely this would be a death penalty case. For, especially when it seems so pre-planned and pre-designed uh, with and, pulling out the fire alarm. And but, I, I can't talk about the facts now, but, but given what I know, I would firmly believe it would be a death penalty case, of course. Attorney General Pam Bondi, thank you very much for joining us here. Thanks, and Sean, you. one last thing that the governor did say, I wanted to recap. He said, you know, as a grandparent, a parent, you see this on the news, you wonder, oh my gosh, could this happen to me? And when you see it happen again, uh, your heart sinks. And he, his conclusion was, the only thing you can conclude here tonight, this man, this suspect, is nothing but pure evil. All Sean. Right. Phil, thank you, and the Attorney General, thank you. The President did say no child, teacher, or anyone else should ever feel unsafe in an American school. Um, I just think that one thing, put, I don't think you're going to change anybody's mind on the gun debate. I don't think that's going to happen, but can we have former military, former police inside of schools defending against people that want to get in that shouldn't be in there, that you can lock the doors, have one, two, three entrances. Um, we ought to answer these questions sooner than later. Um, anyway, earlier today, one of the students inside the school when the shooting actually started, her name is Megan Hill. Listen to her describe this harrowing scene. I was sitting in class, the bottom floor of the freshman building, and all we heard was gunshots. We heard 15 rounds shoot the ceiling. We all dove to the left side where the windows were. Our teacher told us to get to the side closest to the door, so we all ran behind the desk. The shooter, the good thing the door was locked. The shooter shot through the door, poked in, shot a couple people next to me. I was sitting right behind a cabinet, and the bullet passed my ear, got a girl next to me. We couldn't help anybody in the time because we had to stay quiet. 911 wasn't working on my phone. Um, apparently the guy got out there, there's dead bodies in the hallway, people were killed in the hallway. Um, my sister was running, she was in the bathroom at the time, and she ran from him and got into, luckily into a room that she found open. On the phone right now is that student that you just heard from, Megan Hill. Megan, uh, thank you for taking the time to join us. You're a junior as I understand it. Um, you're in a room, this door is locked. This guy's shooting. Take it from there. What happened from there, Megan? Um, as the shooter was in the hallway, I'm not sure if I was the first room. He shot through the glass window, did not open our door, and he turned the gun towards the side of the wall where the students were sitting. He shot four people. One was dead. There are three other injured. A girl was shot in her rib. A girl, um, a bullet clipped the top of her kneecap. I was told to stay calm. All I wanted to do was help, but I knew I put everybody else's life in jeopardy. After 10 minutes, I finally couldn't stand anymore. I took off my jean jacket. I threw it over the desk and had someone try to help the girl in front of me. I'm not sure if she was a hold of that jean jacket, but I tried my hardest. Everyone was trying to stay calm. I finally got a hold of my sister, Mackenzie. She was in the second floor bathroom, got into a door safely, and the teacher... They're not allowed to open the door for a policy on Code Red, but he luckily did and he saved her. She was put into a room and survived, and it was very traumatizing. We were told to leave the building. They told us to run out left, to just to head down and run straight to Pine Island. There were bodies on the floor. I'm not sure if that or not. We were just told to run. Yeah. And here's my sister, Mackenzie. Megan, I... Hi, I, this is Mackenzie. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Megan. 
Hi, this is my sister Mackenzie Hill. And first of all, I want to say I'm truly sorry for all the victims in this family from this tragic, tragic event. Yeah. I am a loss of words and still exhausted from this. That's your Never sister. Never what I imagined this to happen at my school. It, that's your in my fourth period, I was. Yeah. Megan, let me. The restroom. So, so all of a sudden, your, lo your door, your classroom is locked. Just so I'm, I'll make sure I'm hearing you well. And the shooter literally shoots through the door, then sticks his gun into the classroom. Four people get shot right in front of you. One person you believe is it died, who's instantly killed. You're trying to help a friend of yours. And, and pass over your jean jacket and everyone's telling you, no, no, stop, stay still, be quiet. And what happened from that point? I, di I didn't fully understand. From that point on, we, in about a couple minutes, the uh, SWAT team and police banged on our door. We ducked down, they came in, they asked who was hurt. We told them the four people that were hurt. They got them out of the room and they escorted us. Just like I said before, we turned left and headed straight to Pine Island Road. Yeah. You know, um, and then about 10 minutes go by in the interim 10 minute period. Did, after the, did he stay shooting long? How long was he actually shooting into the classroom? He was shooting into the classroom no longer than a couple of seconds. He was shooting in the hallway up at the ceiling and dust was falling onto us. Then he shot through the glass window and turned his guns to the right. And we um, shot a couple of people. Yeah, and so, and then I guess you heard a loud bang, and that was the police coming to rescue all of you? Yes, they were coming to make sure we were okay and clear out the room. You know, I, I can't even imagine um, what, it would, what it had to be like for you, and, and you had your twin sister who was on the floor above you in the bathroom? Well, actually, she was actually, she's in that class with me. It's AP Psychology. Um, five minutes before the shooting actually happened, she asked the teacher to go to the restroom. The restroom on the first floor was locked, so she went up to the second floor. In the second floor, she heard gunshots. She was with a friend, and she left the bathroom, and she saw the shooter but got into a classroom just in time for them to let her in the room. Mm -hmm. but, um, I understand your sister is there. She was in the second floor bathroom. I don't know if Mackenzie can hear me, um, but Mackenzie... Yes. M Mackenzie, you had an experience that you went up to the bathroom. You both, I guess, are an AP psych, and there is a freshman girl that had severe asthma. And t take it from there, and all the teachers had locked the door, and you guys are running literally door to door, and, and this poor girl is obviously struggling, right? Correct. So while I was in the bathroom, I heard around 10 to 15 gunshots, and immediately my heart started racing. I ran out of the stall, and I got actually two ladies next to me, and I ran to the nearest classroom. I went to the door, and the teacher in the classroom, under school policy, they would not let me in because of the school policy. So I went to the door, and luckily the teacher saw the fear in my face and let me inside the classroom. I feel that if the teacher knows in his gut that he can let you in the classroom in a school shooting and in a scenario like I was in, then he should do it because if he, that teacher did not let me in, I could have been killed today, and I'm very grateful for this teacher. Yeah. Um, and as I got in the classroom, the teacher locked the door after me, along with all the other students. We hid in the back of the room, hearing all the shots around us, and everyone was crying and screaming. Immediately, I called back to my sister, who was in the classroom on the first floor, not knowing anything. And she does not respond, and I cannot bear the fact of losing my best friend. I saw him was and I'm panicking, for I hear that four people were shot in her classroom. You know, and I heard I nothing else, but I do not know if she was okay. Yeah, uh, you know, I want to say this to both you and, and your sister, Megan. Um, both of you showed amazing courage today. Uh, Megan trying to, to help the girl next to her, and, and you obviously helping this poor girl that, that had this asthma attack as she's going on there. Um, yeah, her inhaler was on the first floor, so I was just trying to calm her down my best as I can do to keep the situation calm and not make it worse. Yeah, and when, when did you actually reunite? Because how long after was it that you were able to find your sister again? Well, after I got out of the building, she told me that she got out an hour before me because she was already down the street waiting for me. And I did not know she was okay because I did not have contact with her because I was still in my classroom and I was told to silence my cell phone. So as mm -hmm. I got out, I finally see her. And as I walk out the building, I'm seeing blood and people wounded everywhere. And I see my security guards and it just broke my heart seeing all these poor people wounded. And I couldn't bear the fact that someone could come to this school and shoot up Stoneman Douglas. I just, it was like a dream to me. like. I was like, I'm in a, it was just like, I couldn't believe it. Like, I'm still in shock just like right now. 
Yeah. I, I can't imagine how hard this is for both of you. Um, both of you showed amazing courage today under the most difficult of circumstances. No, no child should have to see that ever. Uh, Megan, Mackenzie, thank you both. We wish you and your families and, and your, your friends, obviously, you're going to have a very tough week ahead as uh, these families are now struggling and the school is struggling in this community. This is a very tight-knit community down in Parkland uh, to come to grips with this, um, this horrible, evil shooting today. Hear more with reaction. Thank you both is criminal defense attorney and former D.C. police detective Ted Williams and former FBI special agent Manny Gomez. You know, once again, Ted, we see what? We saw the police, we saw the sheriff, we saw the FBI. Uh, we see first responders. Uh, you see the everybody, the superintendent, the governor, the attorney general, everybody really all hands on deck today. And it's days like today that you realize I was watching this all unfold live on when I was on my radio show today and just how amazing these people are, but they, you know, it's after the fact. Do we need to reconsider safety for these schools? Well, yeah, I think we do. But let me say, Sean, from the beginning, the interview you just had with those two young women, we saw the best of America in those two young women. And when you look at this guy, Nicholas Cruz, you're seeing, as the governor said, pure Eva. This was a cold-blooded, calculated, carried out carnage massacre. And we, we do have to start rethinking uh, how we have guards and security in these various schools. The sad commentary, though, uh, Sean, is we cannot make our schools a prison. We did have a guard there, but if somebody is hell-bent on going in a school and killing people and killing young people. Twelve of these beautiful young people are dead tonight. This is a tragedy, Sean, in and of itself. Yeah, I, 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 this is not a political statement. I know I'm known for talking politics all the time. This is not political. I don't think it is something that most people would disagree with. And, and Manny, I'll throw this to you. Is that if you're in any administrative building, in this case it's a school, and it seems that there's got to be greater order in terms of monitoring who's getting into this, these schools. Um, I know schools that monitor and control who gets into them. It can be done, and it can be done fairly easily. But more importantly, and they did have a guard, but I mean, a school this big that has 3,200 students and multiple buildings, it seems to me you need a few people in each building retired military retired police and i would think over time that families it, we're not talking about all that much money at the end of the day if each district you know is paying for that security we have every building i walk into in new york city every single building if i'm not if i don't have an id i will go through security and if i don't have a clearance i'm not getting in and if we can do it in every building in New York post 9-11, I would think we could do it in every school in America if we want to. I, I totally agree with you, Sean. And it's not controversial. This isn't a gun debate. No, th th this has nothing to do with guns. This has to do with protecting our children. Um, I totally agree with you in terms of having formal military and or formal law enforcement. Uh, one way to do it is to perhaps federalize it after 9-11. We went from a private security system in most airports to TSA under Homeland Security. It's a great example. So that might be something that Congress may want to consider and moving forward set up a federal system to protect our schools because some school districts honestly don't have the budget for it uh, or may not be willing to raise taxes for it even though it's a necessary thing i, I don't at the end of the day do we going to put a price i remember the the movie years ago lean on me it was about the, the uh principal joe clark right and he got in trouble because he he chained the the school door shut that's not necessarily the answer there should be very specific entry points and other entry points should be closed off right. and but beyond that I think you'd need, and look, I don't even know if it would have been applicable in this situation, but I've got to believe in some situations that if you have first-line defenders there, people that are trained, 
you know, retired military, retired police, that they're going to be able to at least hold off for the five minutes. The police got there. The sheriff right. got there. Right. They got there as fast as humanly possible. They did a great SWAT job. team was there. First responders were there. They did their Everyone right. did their job today right. and did it so well. Right. But I'm just thinking for the long term, we've got to secure these schools. Again, it's not about guns. It's secure the schools. A hundred percent. You know, and, I, I got to tell you, both you yeah. guys, I, I disagree. You, it is about also about guns. If you put a security guard in with a pop gun in one of these schools and you got a guy coming in with an AR-15 rifle, he could even take that security guard and somebody no, else No, no, Ted, I'm, I'm talking about armed former military and armed former police these are people we trust my guess would be in most schools in most communities those retired military and retired police would become the best friends of those students over time they get to know each other it would be good all the way around for everybody win-win safety security we can secure anything we want to secure in this country and nobody's going to convince me otherwise I, I, I totally agree. So go, going back to former military, former law enforcement as an added benefit, going back to your win-win, now you have somebody who's been trained. And if there's other things going on in the school vis-a-vis -vis, uh, drugs, mm -hmm. uh, bullying, things like that, this is a trained professional that can oh. deal with that, identify it. Uh, uh, investigate it and deal with it. Just, so that's an added benefit uh, of having somebody uh, of that caliber there. But it has to be funded and it has to be a serious conversation where we as a nation say enough and we need to fund this just perhaps, uh, like I mentioned, the TSA program. All right, Ted, last word for you. I'm, I was not talking about unarmed former retired military police, Ted. They don't have to be showing their, they could obviously you know, have it concealed, but they certainly would be the front line of defense. But I do believe securing those doors, nobody that is expelled from the school should have access to that school ever. The other thing is paying attention to mental health issues or disgruntled kids or disciplinary uh, issues, looking at the, the, the social media footprint of, of a kid you can throw out of school. Apparently, we're learning from Trace Gallagher, we could have learned a lot about this kid. And that happens after almost every shooting. People are telegraphing where they're headed. Well, you're right. You know, uh, if you see something, you need to say something. And we don't have enough of that. But I was also happy, uh, I'm not saying I'm using the word happy about what and encouraged by what pa Pam Bundy, the attorney general said down there as it pertains to the death penalty. Sean, when you take a gas, put gas masks on, when you take smoke guns, bombs, you go into school, you pull an alarm, you are able to shoot all of these people and then you are able to leave that school and I I want to find out that you're mentally ill. I have a serious problem with mental yeah. illness when you have the common I, decency and sense to know how to do all of that. I know schools that have this security and it works. Thank you both. Manny, thank you. Ted, thank you. Uh, all right, joining us now, Fox News correspondent at large, Geraldo Rivera, nationally syndicated radio host, Larry Elder, and American First Action spokesman, senior advisor, former Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark. Geraldo, uh, what about the idea? Let's let's just let's protect the kids. Forget about all the other debates. Ex former military, retired military, retired police, and every school should have basic fundamental security. Not like the White House necessarily, but we can secure anything we choose to secure. They should be at least as secure as airports. Yeah. Sean, I heard about this taking Seoul from her school to her after school activity. My 12 year old, there it is on the radio, another psycho punk loser with a machine gun, an AR-15 slaughtering uh, these innocents. It, it, it makes me sick. How do you get the gun? How do you get the thousand dollar gun? How do you get all these magazines? Where was his parents? Where was his family? Where was his friends for goodness sake? I mean, it is just absolutely outrageous. 25 of these school massacres since Columbine in 1999. When are we going to see that this is a national emergency? It, you want to spend 25 billion on a wall? What about spending 25 billion and making our schools secure from these these savages that all they want to do we is gotta get away from blood they, and mayhem? Well, you will agree with me. We, we got to get away from uh, already this, this the same predictable, frankly, insane and, and intellectually lightweight debates are going on. This is about we can secure these schools if we choose to. 
We have the mindset. We have the manpower. We have the people to do it. And I don't even think it would be that expensive. We just have to decide I, we're going to secure. I, I agree with. For I agree with everything military, you're saying. Police. Everything you're saying, and I want exactly that as the remedy, Sean, but the AR-15 was designed to kill people. It, ever it, since the Brady ban expired, we've been selling them Geraldo, like hotcakes. You're cakes. not going to legislate. I this mean, is please, not a at what point? What do you use this is these for? Kids to go hunt ducks? Debate. Uh, Geraldo, I've carried firearms for 30 years of my life, Geraldo. It, and there are g guns that also protect people. Guns in the hand of retired military Larry Elder or Sheriff Clark and in guns in the hand of retired police with track records that are beyond admirable in those schools are gonna protect those kids not perfectly but certainly if you add to that measures that control access to the school it would go a long way to making every school safer and if we need them in some schools you put the metal detectors in I, I couldn't agree with you more. I want to just say to my friend Geraldo, far more people are killed uh, with handguns than with AR-15. So if you really want to ban a weapon in order to deal with this carnage, you'd be banning oh, all that, of the weapons. That's a bogus argument, Larry. Let me just let me let me just finish. Let me just finish. Let me just say this to my friends. Did on you the hear left, those guns going gun off in that school? No. Did you hear the guns going off in that video in that classroom? Did you hear that AR-15? Did you hear that bang, bang, bang? And there's a there's a kid, a, 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 a sophomore in high school, defenseless and this guy's got a, a long rifle and he's popping with that AR-15? Come you're on done, with this debate when already. When you're done, I'll answer. When you're done, I'll answer. Far more people are killed with regular handguns than with AR-15s. If the goal is to eliminate deaths, then you'll be eliminating firearms, including handguns, regular handguns. Are you prepared to do that? I don't think you are. The question really is, what common sense gun control measure can we pass that can really minimize the carnage? And I want to say to my friends on the left, if there was some sort of common sense gun control legislation, which is a phrase you guys always use that didn't violate the Second Amendment, I'm down with it. Tell me what it is. All right, Sheriff Clark, let's bring you into this. To me, I want to get it away from, I don't think it's about the gun. I, I, I don't think anybody's mind is going to be changed. It's not, it's not about on, the gun. I've been on radio 30 years. I'm now on my 23rd year here at the Fox News Channel. I, don't, I believe in the Second Amendment. I disagree with Geraldo because you could easily bring in any other gun, and if you're trained in the use of that gun, you know how quickly clips can be changed out or you bring in multiple guns with you. I support guns as a safety feature, especially in the hands of retired military, retired police, locked doors, security, first and foremost. Geraldo's right. This is a national emergency at this point. Let's save the kids, secure these schools. We can do it if we decide to do it. Well, sure, Sean. I mean, look, we're all grief stricken. We're all shocked uh, by what happened today. It happened after Columbine, happened after Sandy Hook, happened after Pulse nightclub. But the worst thing you can do, I think, at a time like this in the early stages, you know, emotion takes over. But you can't let emotion drive public policy. You end up with bad policy. One of the things that I suggested after Sandy Hook was that we should have this, this discussion at the state level, not nationally, about uh, armed guards in school to protect uh, these valuable assets, our children. I was excoriated by the left. They call that a crazy idea. And then what happens, though, after, okay. long after these incidents uh, occur, everybody kind of forgets about it, and then they pick up and they just go home, and the discussion doesn't continue, continue yeah. until the next incident. So I think, again, we need to have that discussion, but that should occur at the state level. But I want to make it clear this is not a gun control issue. We don't need any knee-jerk reactions, which is what I hear after things like this. My God, I, you know, let's let the grieving period uh, it happened for these families and, and, uh, and 17, the victims and 17 the 17 families Florida. tonight are, are now, and some literally they didn't have ID, and they're still identifying them. Um, I think there is right. a middle ground here that would keep these kids safe. Thank you all for being with us. When we come back, the mindset, our signs, evidence, social media aspects of people that are on the brink missed.